Hello, welcome to another video. In this video, we'll have a comprehensive discussion on clubfoot. Introduction Clubfoot, also referred to as Talipus equinovarus, is a complex condition that involves both the foot and the lower extremity. It is characterized by the foot being excessively plantar flexed, with the forefoot swung medially and the sole facing inwards. Embryology of foot development The foot sequentially assumes three different positions during embryonic and early fetal life. At the 15 mm stage, approximately 8 weeks of gestation, the foot is in a straight line with the leg. By the 30 mm stage, approximately 10 weeks of gestation, the foot rotates to a marked equinovarus adductus position, and then by the 50 mm stage, approximately 11 and a half weeks of gestation, it changes to a slightly equinovarus adductus position, which remains throughout the fetal life. These positional changes result from the growth of the distal ends of the fibula and the skeletal elements of the lateral foot during the fibular phase of rapid growth. Anatomy of clubfoot The main anatomic abnormality is a mild to severe deformity of the talus, which is small and abnormal in all of its relationships. There is subluxation of the talocalcaneo navicular joint with underdevelopment of the soft tissues on the medial side of the foot and frequently of the calf and peroneal muscles. The ligaments of the forefoot are normal, but the forefoot is adducted and supinated. Bony malposition and secondary contractures cause the foot to be held in a relatively fixed position, which is resistant to realignment. The club foot, calf, and leg are smaller and shorter than the normal limb. Classification based on etiology. Club feet can be classified based on etiology as follows. Positional club foot. Positional club foot is due to intrauterine crowding or breech position. It is not a true club foot. It is a normal foot that has been held in a deformed position in utero. The positional club foot easily corrects to a normal position with manipulation. Congenital clubfoot. Congenital clubfoot is the most common type of clubfoot. It is usually an isolated anomaly without a well delineated etiology. Current management is based upon manipulation that includes casting and bracing, referred to as the Ponsetti method. Syndromic clubfoot. Syndromic clubfoot is associated with other clinical manifestations that comprise the underlying syndrome, which may be due to a genetic disorder such as trisomy 18 or Edwards syndrome. Overall etiologies of clubfoot. Clubfoot can be secondary to factors intrinsic or extrinsic to the fetus. Most cases are idiopathic in nature. The prognosis depends upon several factors including the severity of the defect and the presence of additional structural or chromosomal abnormalities. Let's take a look at some of the intrinsic factors first. Chromosomal abnormalities, trisomy 18, deletions of the chromosomes 18q, 4p, 7q, 9q, and 13q. p is the short arm and q denotes the long arm of a chromosome. Connective tissues, Arthrogryposis, collagen defects, joint synostosis, neurologic, anencephaly, anterior motor horn cell deficiency, hydrocephaly, holoprosencephaly, myelomeningocele and spina bifida, muscular, myopathy, myotonic dystrophy, skeletal dysplasia, campomelic dysplasia, Chondrodysplasia punctata, diastrophic dysplasia, Ellis van Creveld dysplasia. Certain syndromes like Escobar syndrome, Hess syndrome, Larsen syndrome, Meckel Gruber syndrome, multiple pterygium, Pina Schokier syndrome, Smith Lemley Opitz syndrome, and Zellweger syndrome can all result in clubfoot. Among the extrinsic factors, Synechiae, early amniocentesis, 
intrauterine crowding due to fibroids, multiple gestation, oligohydramnios or Potter sequence, and malpositions like breach can all affect and result in clubfoot. Risk factors. The major risk factors for clubfoot are a family history of the defect and the presence of a condition that restricts fetal foot movement such as crowding in multiple gestation, oligohydramnios, uterine abnormality, and fetal neuromuscular disorders. These risk factors are generally not modifiable. Characteristic features. It is bilateral in 30 to 50% of cases. Mechanism. A dominant posterior musculature, especially tibialis posterior, and a weak peroneus muscle, and a shortened Achilles tendon can all contribute towards causation of a club foot. Deformity. The foot points downwards and inwards. The hind foot is in the equinus in varus position. The midfoot in the cavus position. The forefoot is adducted with limited dorsiflexion of the entire foot. Diagnosis. Clubfoot is a clinical diagnosis. Prenatal detection via ultrasound is possible. Transvaginal ultrasound can detect the abnormality as early as 12 to 13 weeks of gestation. The sonographic diagnosis is based upon visualization of the plantar surface of the fetal foot in the same sagittal plane as both lower extremity bones. The abnormal position should persist over time and despite motion of the foot, since a fetus can temporarily turn its foot into a position simulating club foot. In addition, the foot should be visualized away from the uterine wall. Three-dimensional ultrasound, if available, can provide a clearer image but is not essential for diagnosis. The latest guidelines suggest an amniocentesis for karyotype in microarray if there are associated abnormalities or indications for invasive prenatal diagnosis like an abnormal maternal analyte given the increased risk of aneuploidy. As per guidelines, clinicians perform amniocentesis in the setting of isolated club foot because associated abnormalities may not be detected by ultrasound and small numbers of karyotypic results from these cases limit the reliability of published estimates of risk. The x-rays can confirm the clinical diagnosis with the long axis of talus and calcaneus being parallel. Management. There is no prenatal treatment, manual repositioning and serial casting immediately after birth can help. If manual repositioning is unsuccessful, surgical release of contractures and correction of bone alignment can help.